Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're going to continue work on our ASVAB arithmetic reasoning practice exam. So these problems are just kind of sample problems to get you in the right mindset to be successful at any sort of ASVAB um, arithmetic reasoning test. What I'd highly recommend you do is watch the video, pause the video at this problem, have a notebook and pencil in front of you. When the video is paused, work your way through the problem, do the very best you can, eliminate answers that don't make sense, come up with a solution, unpause the video, and then watch how I do the problem. The way to get good at these problems, at any sort of standardized math test, is to really watch a lot of videos and do a lot of problems. The more problems you solve, the better you get at solving problems. So let's go ahead and get started right here. I'm gonna mark it up as much as I can. You pause the video, do the problem, and then watch how I do it. I did the first 10 problems in a previous video. It is 36 minutes for about 30 problems, no calculator. So you gotta go pretty quick and you need to know the tips and tricks. All right, let's get started. Baker made a total of 20 pies. I wanna write that down. A Boy Scout troop buys one fourth of the pies. A preschool teacher buys one third of the pies and a caterer buys one-sixth of the pies. How many pies does a baker have left? Okay, so we gotta compare fractions. The only way to compare fractions is the common denominator. I'm looking for numbers that four goes into, that three goes into, and six go into. The first number, the lowest number is 12, so I'm gonna take this one-fourth, I'm gonna multiply it by something to get to a 12 at the bottom here. I can't multiply by a number um, greater than one or less than one because it'll affect the value. So I can only multiply by a value of one, which is three over three. That's gonna give me my 12, and the top will have three 12s. This one third, I'm gonna have to multiply by four over four to get a 12. One times four is four, three times four is 12. And then to get this to a 12, I gotta multiply by two over two. Every time I'm multiplying by one, so I don't change the value of it, and then that's gonna give me two twelfths. So I have three twelfths, four twelfths, and two twelfths. Now that I have a common denominator, I could add those fractions together. I add the numerators, and I keep the denominator. So it'll be over 12, three plus four is seven. Seven and two is nine, nine twelfths. How many pies does a baker have left? Well, I have a fraction nine twelfths, I notice that three will go into both these numbers. I could reduce this number right here. Three goes into nine three times. Three goes into 12 four times. So what I'm saying is these three people have consumed three-fourths of the pies. There's a total of 20. I multiply 20 by three-fourths. Four goes into 20 five times into itself once to give me 15 pies. So this guy, this guy, and this guy have consumed 15 of the 20 pies. So how many do they have left? So it's important you really highlight that question. Don't circle 15, because that's how many they have consumed. 15 from 20, give me a correct answer of five. Okay, number 12 here, we have five cases of motor oil. It usually costs 24, but she has it on sale for 22.50. So I could do 22 minus 24, 22.50. So 50 cents will get me to 23. Another dollar will get me to 24. So she saves a dollar 50. How much money did Miriam save on her entire purchase? So they're asking for how much she saved. I have how much she saved, a dollar 50, but she bought five cases. So five times a dollar 50 is the number I want. Let's see if any of these make sense or I can eliminate any of them. This is an automatic distractor, right? She did save $1.50, but $1.50 per case, but she bought five cases. So I could cross that one out, 2250 is out of the ballpark. Um, and then five times one is five bucks, and then 550 cents is 250. So this is gonna be a total of $7.50, her total savings. Again, it's a little bit of a trick for you to go to this answer because you know you do all this work, you do 24 minus 22.50, you come up with $1.50, but you gotta read this bottom line, how much did she save on all five cases? Okay, number 13, a guard walks six blocks 
If we go around the building, if he walks at a pace at eight blocks in 30 minutes, how long will it take him to walk around the building? So I have six, and he, it usually takes him eight. So eight takes 30 minutes. So if I figure this out right here, this is going to reduce to three quarters. Three quarters of 30 minutes is going to be how long it takes him to walk around those six blocks, right? I'm expecting something a little bit less than 30, and specifically it's going to be three quarters less than 30. I could, um, three quarters, maybe the quickest way to do that is cut that number in half to get a half. Half of 30 is 15. So there's my half. I cut that in half to get seven and a half. So here's a half. Here's a quarter. Three quarters is the half and the quarter together, or 2250. And there it is, answer C right there. Teen, the population of this place grew by 600,000 people between 95 and 05 one-fifth more than they originally predicted. So this isn't an important number at all. They, they made a prediction and it grew by one-fifth more and it turned out to be that. So what was the original prediction? I think process of elimination will be the easiest. One-fifth, one-fifth, we could convert that to a percent. That could be the same as 10 over 50. To get to a percent, I'll go to 100. 20 over 100, so 20%. So if it was 400,000 times 20%, it would be 480. That doesn't work. 500,000, 500 times 20 is an extra 100. 500 and 100 is a 600,000. That one does work, right? We keep going. We're done, but uh, just to prove it's not this, 300 times 20 is 60. That would be a total of 360, that doesn't work, and then we're going further and further away. So the correct answer is answer B. Number 15, uh, she's taking a test. She has to get 40 of the 60 questions right to pass, so that's gonna be a ratio or a fraction right out the gate. What percent of the questions does she need to answer correctly? It's important to read this because you don't know if it's gonna be this or one minus this. So we just need to convert this into a decimal um, 40 over 60, I could divide both sides by 10 to get 4 over 6. Reduce that to 2 thirds. 2 goes into there twice, into there three times. I have 2 thirds. Um, hopefully I recognize that as 66 and a third percent. That's the correct answer. No, it's not. Oh, it's an automatic distractor. That's wrong. It's 66 and 2 thirds. It is, that is the correct answer right there. Um, I was going to go with the close one, but that's Close, but not close enough. That's the correct answer. Two-thirds is 66.67. I could also figure that out exactly if I have two-thirds like this. Think of that fraction falling over this way. Three goes into two. It doesn't, so that would be a zero. I put another zero here after a decimal point. Three goes into 26 times to so give me 18. Two, bring down the zero. Three goes into 26 times. 18, I keep going down, 20, and it's going to be 0. .6666, and that's where this comes from, answer D. A teacher deposits $3,000 into a retirement fund. She doesn't add any more money to the fund, which earns an annual interest rate of 6%. How much money will she have in one year? So I have to convert this percent, 6%. Percent. I think of this as like a little arrow in two decimal places. It shoots it over one two, so 6% is 0 0.06 is a decimal, and then I have 3,000 times 0 0.06. I might be able to figure that out a little bit. 10% of that would be 300, so 6% would be about half that, and then 3 times 6 is 180. So it would be 180 in interest plus the original amount, so it would be answer C. It's kind of a quick trick if you're pretty good with the numbers, or you can multiply this out to get 0, 0, 0, 6 times 3, 18. And we have zeros here. Whoops, 18. Zeros here. I add all that together, and it gives me three zeros there. And then my decimal place is over 1, 2. So I start here. I go over 1, 2 to get $180 in interest plus that principal amount to get $3,180. Number 17, the high school track measures a quarter mile. 
how many laps would you have to run in order to get three and a half miles? So I went three and a half miles. How many laps is that going to be? I might be able to figure that out or I could do the long math on this. Um, so first thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to take this three and a half and convert it to a mixed, uh, away from a mixed number to an improper fraction. I do that by going three times two, six plus one. So I have seven halves divided by a quarter. So then the way I divide fractions is I take that seven halves, I'm dividing it by a quarter, which means I multiply it by the reciprocal. So I have seven halves times, that thing reciprocal means flipped over, like that. So the way I divide fractions, multiply by the reciprocal, convert division to multiplication, and then flip that over. Now I just multiply there. I can reduce first, two goes into here once, into here twice, and that gives me 14 laps. Correct answer, answer B right there. Okay, let's go ahead and do number 18 here. There's a little bit of a typo in this one, but I think I'm gonna wrap it up at the end of this problem and do some more problems in a later video. If this video is helpful, please hit the like button, uh, share it with anybody you know looking to do better on standardized math tests, specifically the ASVAB. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Okay, here we are. Carl's driving in Austria where the speed limit is posted in kilometers per hour. So that's a rate, kilometers per hour. The car speedometer shows he's traveling at 75 kilometers per hour. Carl knows that a kilometer is about 0.6 of a mile. How many miles per hour? So I'm going to just take this right here and multiply it by 0.6. Um, so I'm taking 75 times 0.6. That's a pretty rough approximation. I think it's a little bit more like 0.63. So that's going to be 30, 5 times 6, carry the 3, 42, carry the 5, 45. My decimal place is 1 over. So we're at about 45 miles per hour or a little bit more than that. Correct answer, answer A right there. All right, thank you for watching. Any questions, please post them in the comments.